Hey guys, it's Pat. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to share something that I've been setting aside for a while now and something that I just didn't have the courage to talk about, not until now, because I just felt like I wouldn't be able to share it the way I wanted to. I just have a lot of information that I wanted to share that I didn't know how I would be able to organize them into one but you know, I'm giving in, I'm doing it. So in today's video, I wanted to share my experience of transferring from UP Diliman to UP Manila. All the good, all the bad, and everything in between. Before we get started on anything, I would like to make a disclaimer that these are all my own personal experiences and this may not apply to everybody. I applied during the pandemic, so everything was pretty much online from the communication between offices to the submission of documents. You also have to remember that every campus has their own set of requirements and procedures so how I transfer it may be different from how others transfer it. It may also be different from how the shifting and transferring process will be in the future. Nonetheless, I am going to give you a very detailed and thorough narrative of my experiences and tips if you're planning on transferring to UP because I just wanted to share this chapter of my life with you guys. Just to give you a little context or background, I guess, I got accepted into UP Diliman based on my OPCAT, but I didn't exactly qualify for my first choice, of course. So if you didn't know, when you apply for UP, you are asked to fill out this application form with your two choices of campus, and under each of them are four choices of courses. When I got the result of my OPCAT, I passed UP Diliman, but I didn't qualify for my first choice, of course. That's basically how these screen applicants in UP. They check if you're qualified for the campus first before admitting you into their courses. So during that time, I was, to say the least, very torn because I passed the other three schools that I applied for and qualified for my first choice, of course, but in UP, yes, I passed, but I didn't qualify for the course that I wanted. So I was hearing a lot of opinions, a lot of suggestions, and a majority of them told me that shifting and transferring was another option. And at that time, I completely had no idea of what the shifting and transferring process was in UP. So anyway, I decided to pursue UP Diliman in the course that I didn't exactly plan to be in. By the way, this is not meant to bash the campus nor the course that I was in. I am not in any way saying that when you get into UP Diliman, this is going to be your experience at all because again, this is just my story and my personal experiences. Also, I am intentionally leaving out the course that I was in because I just don't want to make it look that way. I love the course that I was in and I'm completely grateful for being able to learn and make a lot of loving memories in that course. So anyway, again, I decided to pursue UP Diliman. I was told that I could only shift or transfer after a year of being in my course because one of the requirements was the number of units and your GWA. So after a year, here I am, I was able to transfer from UP Diliman to UP Manila. Now, I want to get into the different categories of the shifties and transferees that you need to know before proceeding to your transferring process. Every category has their own set of requirements, so you need to know in which category you belong first before you can know what your requirements are. So shifties and transferees are categorized into four S1, S2, T1, and T2. S1 are shifties within the same college. S2 are shifties within the same campus, but shifting from and to a different college. T1 are transferees from another UP unit or from another campus, so just like in my case, and T2 are transferees from another university. Basically, shifties are students planning to shift within the same campus, and transferees are students from another UP campus or from another university. Again, you have to check with the UP campus that you're planning to shift or transfer to because sometimes some courses do not accept a certain category. Now, I want to get into the requirements and the transferring process. Again, you have to remember that how I transferred may be different from how others transferred, and it may also be different from how the shifting and transferring process will be in the future. So UP Manila required at least 33 units for transferees from another university and at least 30 units for transferees from another UP campus. At that time, I already had 37 units, so I was qualified to apply for transferring because I already finished a 
year in UP Diliman. Aside from the number of units, UP Manila also required that transferees have at least a GWA of 2. That's the minimum requirement for the campus. But sometimes, some courses have a higher grade requirement. So at that time, my GWA was higher than that. You have to remember that transferring is very selective because of course, there is a high likelihood that other applicants would have a higher G1 than you. So at the time you're studying in your present campus, you have to make sure that you can get the highest G1 you can because you'll earn a higher chance of being accepted in your chosen campus and course. Other than the two that I've mentioned, UP Manila also requires that you submit the application form, your transcript of record, certificate of good moral, and you also have to make sure that you meet the requirements of your course because some courses do have additional requirements like like an exam or an interview. So for biology, which is the course that I applied for in UP Manila, we didn't have an additional requirement to submit. So we were basically screened based on our GWA. So I submitted my requirements on July and I only received the results on September. Yeah, you can already imagine how worrisome those weeks were. I can remember that there was a lot of crying involved. Now, let's talk about the problems slash complications that I've encountered throughout my transferring process. First is with my advisor. So when you get into UP, you are assigned to one academic advisor throughout your stay in the university. So your advisor is basically responsible for signing your documents when you're enlisting and responding to any of your concerns about the course. Obviously, there's more to it, but that's at least the gist to it. So when I got into UP de Laman, I made it very clear to my advisor that I was planning to shift or transfer because at that time I wasn't really sure if I wanted to shift or if I wanted to transfer I just knew that the course wasn't for me so in the middle of the year I was sending her emails asking if I could meet with her for a consultation because I wanted to make sure that the subjects I was taking during that year would be credited to the course that I was planning to shift to she replied to a few of my queries but to some she didn't because she had personal matters to take care of it was pretty understandable because she also had other students to check up on aside from her personal matters. So nonetheless, I was able to get my documents from their respective offices. I just had to contact a lot of people. So I guess when you're transferring, know your college secretaries, OURs, and advisors email ahead of time just so it's easier to communicate with them when you need a document. Next are gen ed classes or GEs. If you're not in college, GEs are subjects that each student needs to take regardless of his or her course to learn skills, and knowledge from different subject areas, basically to make you holistic. Now, the thing is, I took GE classes when I was in UP Diliman thinking that it would all be credited because again, no one was replying to me and I had no idea if the GE classes I was about to take at that time would be credited to the course that I was planning to shift to. And when I asked one of the offices, they told me that it would all be credited because they were GE classes. So when I transferred, I found out that only some of the GE classes I took would be credited and some of them would just be considered as an elective. So I still have to take other GE classes just to fulfill the number of GE units required for my course. The last problem that I've encountered is with my SAIS. SAIS is the portal in UP Manila where you view your grades and enlist in your classes. Now because their application as shifties and transferees overlapped with the application of freshies, OUR basically had to provide each one of us our SAIS credentials, which was a lot of people by the way. So this became a problem because in UP Diliman, we used CRS as our portal. But again, the portal in UP Manila is SAIS, so I couldn't use my academic email for anything in UP Manila. And what's worse is because I can't access our portal in UP Manila, I couldn't enlist in any one of my classes. So literally, the classes had already started on September, but during that time, I was still frantic about even getting a class. It's not only me, by the way. All of us transferees were on the same same page, all of us had no classes even if the classes technically had already started. But thankfully, we were able to power through that. Our advisors helped us add slots to our classes and thankfully, our professors allowed us to enlist in their classes. Now, I want to talk about all the good things that have happened since. Honestly, I am so so proud of myself for making this decision. I kid you not. I cried more than one could ever during this whole transferring process because 
I didn't know if I was making the right decision. I was worried to take the risk because to me, that was a big decision and that was a big change. And at that time, I told no one. None of my friends in UP Diliman knew. None of my friends from high school knew that I was transferring. Only my parents knew that I was planning to transfer. So during the whole transferring process, I was very worried because my friends in UP Diliman at that time were already planning their subjects for the second year. And during that time, I still didn't know if I was accepted as the transferee or not. So I worried a lot, I cried a lot, but I guess growth really doesn't happen in your comfort zone. I am in a genuinely happy place right now despite the stress of the hackads, and I know in my heart that I made the right decision. My friends in UP Diliman, my friends from high school, and my parents were all so supportive when I told them that I was gonna transfer. So if you're contemplating on whether you should shift or transfer, I guess just ask yourself if that would make you happy because at the end of the day, this is your happiness, this is your journey, and this is your life. So that's it for today's video. If you have any other questions about my transfer experience or transferring in general, just leave them in the comments below. Also, make sure to follow me on my Instagram because I might be doing a Q&A soon. Anyway, thank you so, so much for sticking around. You guys are the best and I hope you have a wonderful day.